Hello, I'm Mark Wade with utahguide.com. How would you like to be the first person to enter Utah's Zion National Park? Today we're going to talk about that individual who was guided there by Native Americans in the 1800s. He was the first pioneer explorer of the canyon. And we're going to meet his great-great-granddaughter. Join us. Welcome to the utahguide.com podcast. I'm Mark Wade, your host. I'm here with Camille Johnson-Taylor. Camille, you're a little bit famous, I just have to say. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> for a couple of reasons. One is you've been the tourism director here in Kane County, Utah for many years and worked in the tourism office, I know, for a long time yeah. here. And now you've accepted a new position. Tell us, what is that position? Yeah, so I'm with the Utah Office of Tourism. I'm the director of community and partner relations. It's kind of a lot, so I have to say in my head, decapper. <laughs> and so that's what it is, department or director of community and partner relations. Very good. Well, congratulations Thank on you. that new opportunity. I appreciate it. Today we're going to talk about a variety of things. First off, though, you're the descendant of probably the first pioneer settler to ever enter Zion Canyon, Zion yeah. National Park as we know it today. Right. It was about this time in November, 1858, while I was looking the country over with some Indian guides, that we came near the edge of the canyon, now known as Zion. The Indian guides refused to go down into the canyon with me. As they said, window pits, devils were there. They camped on the rim of the canyon while I went down in and explored the beautiful canyon scenery. I was in there longer than I told the Indians I would be, and when I came back, they were gone. They thought the devils had got me. I feel a lot of pride about that. I think that's really cool, you know, as I've read some things in the past, and then you actually shared some things with me about Nephi Johnson. Um, I actually bring that up quite a bit. So he's my third great-grandpa, or second great-grandpa, actually. I'm the seventh generation Utah, Southern Utah, local native, and then I've got grandkids, so they'd be ninth generation locals. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Well, let's talk a little bit about what he may have seen. You've spent a lot of time in Zion National mm -hmm. Park, and part of Zion National Park, the eastern edge of, of Zion National Park is part of King County, isn't right. it? Right. And you've got Bryce Canyon, which is part of the county. You've got the Grand Staircase, part of the county. You've got Lake Powell, that's a yes. part of the county. Yeah, we're definitely rich with all these natural wonders and assets, so we're super fortunate to have that concentration here in King County. Would you like to have been your great-great-grandpa? You know, of course I would. I can't even imagine what that was like. You know, I, I think of his um, adventurous spirit, you know, that he really was this explorer and scout, and so he went beyond and he went into the canyon, and in the account it said that his um, Indian guides, Native American guides, had thought something happened to him, so they left when he got out. Um, they were nowhere to be found. They probably thought he got swallowed up in the canyon. Well, it's my understanding that the Native Americans were a little bit spooked by what they what they found there, what they what they thought was there. There, uh, some accounts say that there there's some of the gods that they worshipped or believed in mm -hmm. may have inhabited this canyon. So right. you could see why they wouldn't want to just hang out. Yeah, I if think they referred to it as like the Devil's Canyon or something like that. And you think about it, I mean, it's a dramatic canyon where dramatic things are still happening for it to form. And so I'm sure that there were some incidents there that had them a little bit scared of what could happen in Zion Canyon. You know, I kind of joke lately, especially with the weather and the winter that we've had. I'm like, Utah is like a constant game of Jumanji. <laughs> There's just always like crazy weather, crazy happenings. I mean, I've been seeing as I've been driving around Utah, a lot of like cliffs sloughing off near the, yeah. near the road and a lot of fresh breakage. It's like the landscape is still being formed. And with all the uh, snow we've had this year and the spring runoff, I just came down through Hatch and Severe River was 200 yards wide. Oh my gosh, that's insane. Yeah. And yeah. probably in, very muddy. In yeah. spots, right? Yeah. Not very deep, Yeah. But pretty wide. Right. Pretty wide. In your position, your former position now as director of tourism for King County, 
which encompasses the city of Kanab, which we're in right now, yeah. and we're sitting in a back lot, kind of a, like a movie lot in Kanab, Utah, where they used to make a lot of Western yeah. movies, didn't they? Yes, they did. I, I think it's over 200 movies and TV series, if you count each of the TV series that were filmed in King County, and so it has just a really remarkable movie history here. And you're always trying to bring another Hollywood production to Kane County, right, aren't you? That's right, that's right. I mean, most recently I'll brag about, you know, Kevin Costner being here in Southern Utah. And I got to meet him actually at this restaurant just here. I didn't think I would get starstruck, but um, I got a picture with him. One of my commissioners said, do you want to get a picture? And Kevin was right there. And I'm like, well, if it's not a bother. So then I stand up next to him and I was going to try and be cool. But then all of a sudden I turned into Cheshire Cat, like the whitest grin in that photo. And I'm like, it's a terrible picture of me, but I had to share it on social media because it's Kevin. We're going to show you that picture here on this. <laughs> oh, <well>. no. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk because uh, for years I've always thought of Kane County and Kanab. And I had to be careful where I said this to people, but I think this is maybe the best central place to base to hub and spoke to experience what we were talking about earlier you got zion to the to the west and a little bit north you got yep. bryce canyon to the north lake pal and grand staircase to yep. the east and what do we have to the south north rim of the grand canyon the every, granddaddy every yeah every which way you go there is this amazing geological wonder to explore and experience and so we have a tremendous concentration right here in king county so you can base in Kanab or Orderville and explore all those things that are very accessible to the area. What's interesting too is, is that you've got all those high-level world-class attractions. Then you start going in between those places and you can hop, skip, and jump to a cool place almost every few minutes, it seems oh, like. Oh, truly. Um, a few years back we had this destination guru visit our area talking about tourism and he's like, mind blown he's literally like this is like national park quality like everywhere we took him that was you know just the blm area or even private land he was just mind blown at the quality of scenery that we live in let's just loop our way around the county just quickly here i know if i were to look to the and i'm gonna go alternating with you i'll say something you say something. okay fine <laughs> pipe spring national monument just to the west of us pretty darn cool place and i know that's probably the first place if i remember where the the telegraph came to is that right no, you know what? You probably know more than me. I don't I think, remember I think, that. I think That's in the amazing. 1870s it was. And of course, Kanab here, you had a fort. Yeah. And that was a fort yes. of sorts. Yeah. And, and people trying to populate those areas while the Native Americans were still getting used to the fact that pioneer settlers were coming right. into the area. Right. So let's jump from Pipe Spring and let's go... Let's go north on 89. What would be some of the first things I'd see going up that way? Well, one of the things that immediately comes to mind is Coral Pink Sand Dunes, you know, State Park going there. That's actually one of my favorite. And, you know, trying to be careful now that I'm wearing the Utah hat, but I'm definitely partial to it because I also have so many memories attached to that place. It's just a giant sandbox. Whether you're a little kid or a grown adult, there's something fun and amazing to do and explore there. And, and it's not just any old sand dunes, is it? It's, a, it's the color is yes. more unique than most places you'd yes. ever see. Yeah, and the color, it's interesting because people kind of, the pink part escapes them. They just kind of, they come and they expect something different, but the color actually shifts with the lighting. So it can look more orangey and then it can look more pink depending on the time of day or even the time of year that you're checking it out. So if I were just a little little south of that, you've got the Wind Caves. It's now become quite a popular place. Right. You've got Moki Cave, which has been there for so long, for oh, yeah. a long time, maybe 80 years. Yeah, that was interesting. I've just um, spent a week and a half up in Salt Lake for work, and I ran into this guy at the Gateway Mall, and it kind of came up in conversation about where I'm from. And he's like, what's that cave? You know, or that business that's built into a cave. and. I was a little bit taken aback for a second. I was thinking of Moab and I'm like, oh, oh, Moki Cave. So that was the first thing that popped into his mind associated with this area. So it has a fascinating history. It's man-made, but they, um, back in the heyday of making the movies, it was like a bar and a dance hall. Currently it's um, a museum and a gift shop and they also base some of their activities um, that start from there. There's some pretty cool artifacts inside that place too. Yeah. Dinosaur tracks and old mm -hmm. pottery yes. dating back a thousand years. I, I was impressed with what you what you find there. Let's go. You have elevations in Kane County that go from, I would say, maybe around 4,000 to up over 10,000. Mm -hmm. And up, up, up on the plateau, you've got 
Duck Creek Village. Yeah, Duck Creek Village is so much fun. That's again, not just these major assets, but the geological change and even kind of climate change that you have um, from Kane County. We normally on a normal get, year get very little snow, pretty mild winters, but then you go up to Duck Creek, just 45 minutes from here, high elevation, tons of snow. They do a ton of snowmobiling up there in the winter but kind of that alpine territory in the summer. It's nice to go up there to the cooler temperatures. They have horseback riding, um, ATV enthusiasts love the trails up there. So it's, it's nice in the winter to do the winter sports, the snow sports, and then in the summer to have a little cooler temperatures. So you brought up some of the things we're gonna talk about next in our next segment, and that is the infrastructure for a visitor that comes here. Duck Creek has it, yep. and there's a lot of it that's, some of it quite new, that's exciting for yeah, people to come here exactly. for. Exactly, and that's been part of our goal is to build our infrastructure. And I think you're succeeding. <laughs> well, let's talk now a little bit about uh, King County as a whole, and we both know that, that county lines don't mean a lot of things to people. Right. But we've got a city here that we're in right now, Kanab, and then you've got a lot of bedroom communities, if you want to call them that, and, and different destinations. We talked about Duck Creek Village. Right. Let's let's work our way down towards Kanab just briefly here. Coming off the mountain down uh, Highway 89, you've got, give me the towns. Glendale and yeah. Orderville and Mount Carmel. Yeah. And that's, uh, and then Kanab. And if you go up on the plateau towards Zion National Park, what's up on top of the plateau? Then you've got two incredible ranch resorts. On the south side, you've got Zion Mountain Ranch, and then on the north side, um, they're at the they're calling it Apple Cross now, but North Fork Road, uh, Zion Ponderosa Resort. You call it Apple Cross because coming, this is something that's really starting to happen, is a new visitor center that's, that's right. outside Zion National Park, two miles outside the park, but it's gonna be built in a cooperative effort and that's pretty exciting and that's yeah. It is really exciting. I mean, it's really kind of a rare opportunity to be able to develop the entry to a park 100 years after its existence after it started and so that'll be pretty incredible and you know there's um, a pretty high volume of visitor going into the park but this will only allow for even more visitors to enjoy the park and even park-like experiences beyond the border of the national park like i said everything is national park worthy around here what i've enjoyed about that plan that i've seen is that they're going to try to keep things on, on the kind of the down low aren't they they're going to keep it a quieter side of zion yeah that's right it won't be uh, quite like what you find over in springdale for right. example Right, it'll be a, a, like you say, a little quieter. Currently about 25% of the visitors enter the park from the east side of the park. Um, and it's nice, it's nice to kind of have that contrast of the two sides of the park and have this more experiential side with these ranches where you have all these great activities, fewer visitors, a lot of open landscape. So it's really cool and a nice contrast that people should really experience both. So you mentioned Orderville, you mentioned uh Glendale and some of those towns coming down Long Valley, I know they call it. Yeah. And uh, there has been some increase of infrastructure there, but coming into the Kanab area, talk a little bit about what you've seen maybe in the last five years even. Um, well, we've had a lot of trail development and we, that's been intentional to really expand our destination development product so we can absorb more visitors and still have it feel like it's not overrun with visitors or too touristy. Um, and then we've seen a ton of local guides crop up and I think that's so incredible and a lot of locals who see the opportunity from tourism and have started guide services and then additionally the restaurant scene where we've become this darling foodie scene in Kanab and it's kind of unexpected for visitors to come here and have some of the best food they've ever had on their travels. Um, Sago restaurant on the north end of town received the top award in fine dining from the Utah Restaurant Association a few years back. Um, Rocking V is an incredible diner. It's kind of like all American eclectic food with a little Southwest into it. Great food. It's so great. Um, and then Kanab Creek Bakery, these amazing like croissants, you know, um, European type style stuff. And then kind of kind of making my way around the bend here. Houston's is a historic restaurant. Been around for a long time. Yeah, it? it's the pioneer of the food scene. In do they Kanab. still wear a gun on their, uh, on their... I don't they think they do. <laughs> they have them hanging on the wall, but yeah, they used to have their six shooters. Um, and then, you know, we've got um, Wild Thyme, kind of a Cajun influence to your typical American dishes. And then across the street from them is um, Vermilion 45, a French country table restaurant. And then I can't not mention Escobar's Mexican restaurant because so many people come here for that. Just for Escobar's. Just for Escobar's. And then um, fast food wise, you've, well, I should say 
it's a burger place. I don't know that's fast food because it's all freshly made, but Big Al's or Junction. Um, again, a lot of our people that go to the lake from Kanab, they have to stop and eat at like Houston's is traditional, Big Al's, and then Escobar's are some of those top three. So you've covered, we've talked a little bit about the food. Did we talk about lodging? So lodging, it ranges quite a bit. So most of our lodging or our room base is here in Kanab, but we have some really cool lodging opportunities on these, you know, bedroom communities. Um, Mount Carmel, East Zion, Orderville. There's everything from Conestoga wagons, tree houses, glamping, luxury homes. Tiny um, homes. Tiny homes. Um, everything Vacation you can rentals. imagine yeah. yeah it's just it's really cool that's where I, I kind of refer to the experiential lodging hub so it's more than just a room to stay in it's an experience where you sleep in and of itself well the last thing we're going to spend some time on is adventure yes <laughs> and i know you're an adventurer as yes. well. we have gone canyoneering together yes, we've done a few right. other things together but is, is that your favorite thing is to go into a slot canyon in this area or, or what's your favorite outdoor I, adventure? You know, I think, yeah, you probably nailed it. Slot canyons are just magic, right? They're yeah. just an incredible experience. You're so intimate with the landscape, the twists and turns, the lighting changes. And we have so many of those. And I know that that's a huge part of our value proposition to our visitors is they love our slot canyons. Yeah. Beyond that, you mentioned the guides and outfitters and they there are a lot of people that just can't, because this is a little bit rough country, yeah. you can't just get into a slot canyon easily by yourself. Right. You can't get to some of these rock formations or these out of the way places unless you've got the right vehicle and the right gear. Yeah, and it's more than that. I think a lot of times people underestimate or overestimate their driving ability because they have the right vehicle. But it's more, it does take skill to get into these areas, right. you know, whether you're rock crawling in some areas or going through deep sand in some areas. I mean, uh, that's what I kind of continue to hear as I'm traveling and out and about myself is people talk about getting stuck here and they're like, and it was kind of a ego shot for them because they thought that they were more experienced, better drivers than they were. It's just, and that's where guides, there's a huge um, value proposition of just getting there. Guides have the skill, the equipment, um, and also they know the area. So access is an important part, but the experience. Sure, you might be able to get to the slot canyon, but having a guide enriches the experience and makes it so much more meaningful when you get to learn some of the history. They understand the geology, the botany. They just add that connective part of your experience that now you're connected to a human that knows this area, that has the experience, and creates a wonderful opportunity experience for you beyond just seeing the canyon. Yeah. Let's just list for people some of the things they can do. We, horseback riding you mentioned. What else? So ATVing, 4x4 four, four four adventures. Kind of Jeep tours. Yeah, Jeep tours. Um, canyoneering for the more adventurous uh, visitor to go canyoneering. Guided hiking. Guided hiking. Guided hiking. Um, we've got a couple of Via Ferratas in the area. And, and Via Ferrata is climbing up a cliff face with your harnessed in and you're cabled in so you can't fall, but That's you're right. climbing up a cliff face with pegs into the wall essentially. That's right, right. that's yeah. right. It's a really cool experience. And then um, you can often pair that with the canyoneering depending on who you go with. And so yeah. um, there's really kind of endless opportunities. Um, then you go to the east side of the ca uh, county. There's also, you know, boating, wave runners. You go to Duck Creek, you've got snowmobiling. Um, more so ATVing. More, and lots of ATVing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's well, one of those things that I've been a little bit reluctant to put out there because I'm like, it's kind of nice that it's not so busy. It's yeah. it's just a nice amount of it. Duck Creek Village, a cool little place to yeah. go to in the summer, especially, and in the winter when you're snowmobiling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Especially with the snow we've had this year. Oh, it's been ridiculous. So it's a record-breaking year, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for taking the time to talk to us about Kanab, King County and Camille Johnson-Taylor <laughs> and Nephi Johnson. That's right. Thank you so much, Mark. This has been fun. It's always an adventure with you, whether we're hiking or sitting down visiting. Hey, thank you. You bet.